This lovely lump of colour is the high-waisted pants that I'm about to walk you through how to sew it so that you can just watch this and go off and do it on your own or if you need a little bit more help you can continue on to watch the rest of the sewing lessons. So the first things you want to do is prep the pocket. Now one of the key steps to do when you're making the high-waisted pants is to prep your pockets. It's pretty easy. This is a really simple design to cut your teeth on. There is a zip, but it's a simple zip. It's one of the easiest zips you can do. It's 20 centimeters long, so it's not too small and finicky, but it's not too long and challenging. Now, in another video, I've shown you how to make this for yourself. I did uh, sew a really complex uh, French pattern. Well, I thought it was complex. Uh, probably, you know, they had like seven different panels needed gathering stitch on it. Anyway, she had in here a great way to uh, do your seam allowance on certain elements like pockets or hems and sleeves is uh, to actually iron it over this for your one centimeter, two centimeter, half a centimeter. So I'm going to show you how to do that with the race pants, I mean the high waisted pants. So what you do, even though I've got the nicks in place for it and it's going to mark where my one centimeter is, you just fold the card, uh, the fabric back onto the card. And the beauty of it is you can just move the card to, you know, take in more or less of that fabric. You know, folding. And then you just, once you've finished doing this, you pin it to the front panels. Look for the two notches on the pocket to line up with the two notches on the side of the pants pattern because that is the two notch the double notch is always oop, is always indicative of going towards the back you'll see that in sleeves now see this is the side that has the two see those two little nicks there there that goes into the side seam like that anyway I'll show you in more detail so if there's my nicks along the bottom make sure I've got it it's just a cool way to do folds it makes your pinning go faster you find where that see how I've ironed that bit see how I've ironed this little bit here so I'm going to make them, it's going to be like connecting the dots. Just fold it around, make sure that's nice because you've got to make sure that this has a nice bit of fold over to it because going around this corner, stitching it can be a little bit fiddly. So there's my fold. I'm just going to give that a little press there. Oh, looking sexy. Doesn't have to be the whole way, but just enough to it so that when you're looking at it, you can eyeball it and know that you're on the money. So you just repeat that with the other pocket. I showed you how to do the seam and iron the seams on this so that it was ready to sew onto the pocket, the pants, the front pants. So what I've done is I've top stitched that down, that this hem, that's a opening of the pocket. I've top stitched that, that down. So the next step we want to do is we want to pin this to the front pants panel. So a great way to keep yourself focused and stop my, you know, stop the doubt is to attach the front, uh, the two front pieces together by doing your top stitch of one centimeter and then doing your serger overlocker or zigzag stitch. Then what you want to do is open up your front panels and you want to grab your two pockets. Now you've got two notches on the side of your pockets. They will line up to the two notches on the outside of your pants that you have to go digging for to find it. And when you find those, that kind of tells you how to 
line up those pockets. When you do so, then I want you to pin in this way so that while you're sewing, you don't have to remove the pins. So what you wanna do is keep the head of the pin out of the way of when the foot goes over there. So just do a little up and down pin. What I would do is I would pin one of the sides and then pin the top parts. Now these are going to be attached to the waistband and this one you're going to have to top stitch. You're going to pin that one that way and pin this one this way. So L pinning. Then what you want to do is make sure as you pin it down the side that you're not making the pocket uneven to the side of the pin. So I would do this side here sorry that's pinned wrong you've got to do that little pin here and then what I would do is I would do one of these elements here so that I have now depending on your fabric, like this is a beautiful cotton, it's not going to be too jumpy, it's going to be really easy to sew with. So I don't really need to do 50 million pins. But if you have a rayon or a silk or you know just something that's just a little bit jumpier, then what I would do to just uh, increase your accuracy in your pinning and your sewing is I would just pin it a little bit closer together. Like I can leave that that far apart but if you have a rayon I'd probably do a two pins in between that you know down there and down there just remember to make sure you fold that underneath as you're sewing but that's all you need to do on the front now we have the back panel and the back panel is sewn a little bit differently because we're putting a zip in the back here so what I've gone ahead and done is I have surged overlocked the two seams there's two edges independently and see how we've got this seam now so what i've done is i there's two nicks on the back panel you've got a double nick to say that it is the back panel and then you've got a nick around about here which makes up part of the length of the zip the rest of the zip is into the waistband so you want to overlock them individually and then join them together from this nick here. You can just see the nick. From this nick there. See how there's a little nick there? <laughs> just on this point here, there's a little nick. Anyway, that begins the open seam of the back of your pants. And when you go to sew this on the crutch, joining the front to the back, make sure you keep that panel flat. Wherever you can reduce the bulk in the joins of multiple seams and you've got an open seam, always press it open and sew it flat. It just looks, you, uh, Betty always says, make sure the inside is just as pretty as the outside. So once we've done those, you can then attach the front and the back together because we need to do this step next so that you can attach the waistband. So we put the two pockets on and then we're going to attach the front and the back. But before we do that, what I want you to do is prepare your waistband. Now your waistband, your waistband starts off looking like that. It's cut on the fold so that you don't have to use such a long piece of fabric. But what you need to do is make sure that you have nicked your size out of these five nicks there, you make sure that you mark that nick. This is a really, really important nick. All of your nicks are important because they tell you where you are in the sewing process and that you are on track. But this one is particularly important because this part, this point is going to be your center front. These nicks here are going to be the left and right side join of your pants. So that's when you know as you're fitting the waistband in 
that it's going to fit and it's going to be a really good finish. The point, the benefit of pinning everything before you sew is so that you can identify any mistakes before you go putting any needles through to the thread. So what I've done is I've then folded my pattern, my fabric, sorry, and then done a small stay stitch just on this seam here that is under eight millimeter to six millimeter from the edge. What I usually do is make sure that my foot of my sewing machine is just, your sewing machine has that two little, the front of the feet. One of those feet, one of those little rowboat type looking things is off the side of the fabric. And that's, and I've also moved the needle over. So I know that when I go to pin and stay, you know, sew this into the waistband, this isn't going to show when it's showing out the front of my waistband like that. You're not gonna see anything. How cool is that fabric? I can't wait to wear these. Anyways, and what I've done is this is my top of my pants, which is, I mean, sorry, this is the edge of my zip that is going to join and finish like the back of my pants. So when we stitch and pin this in, you're going to pin that around like that. I'll go attach those uh, pockets and then we'll, and do the side seam and then I'll pin in the waistband with you. And just like that, we're on the home stretch. So now what you wanna do is this is only the right side because you folded it because it's only the outside and we've doubled it. So you wanna pin while the pants are inside out, you wanna start at the center front because you always wanna start in the middle because then you isolate the mistakes. Now, as we're going to sew, we're gonna sew with the bulk of the fabric that way outside the arm of the sewing machine. Then you want to find your nick and you want to line it up there and then pin the waistband in place. So you've got a little nick here that tells you how much you have to fold that back. That's your one centimeter seam allowance and that's how you're going to pin the zip to that. So what we want to do then is attach the waistband. That's your next step. And then here you've got a pin from the pocket, the top of the pocket. So what you want to do is you want to hold the pocket in place and you want to transfer that pin to include the waistband being attached there. Then you want to when you pin it properly like this, it means when you go to stitch, it's just really easy. But you wanna make sure that all those three layers of fabrics are laying up and are lining up and are being caught while you sew it around. And there's a bit of a curve here. And as you sew into this curve, the way to do this point here, that's at the center front, this point here, this part here that makes your, your center front, what you want to do is you want to, to sew this, you want to come down into that point. You want to leave your needle down into the fabric, lift up your foot, foot and pivot to go the rest of the way around. It's really easy, you just have to remember to do it and get it on the right spot. So that when you turn your waistband inside out, your point is, is defined. You don't want to kind of run across it, otherwise you just have a flat front a waistband. And this is a 70s pattern, and the point is very uh, much a feature of it. Oh, all seams are to be pointed towards the back. So see that? How I was going to point it towards the front? All seams point towards the back. It's just a best practice in sewing, just like the two notches, always mean that goes towards the back, or that is the back panel. All right, let's go sew that in place and then we'll pin in the zip and then we're done. That is how easy the high-waisted pants are to make. Now, when you've finished the hem, we're gonna do it. I've done a funky hem on this one. I've got a, what I've done is I've made it so this is super long. So what I do is I turn it up twice the length I want it so that I get this kind of bagging out cuff hem so it looks like that 
on the outside of my pants and it's really super cool and the way you do it is just this way you do a super big super big hem like that stitch top stitch that down so that it doesn't fall down at any time after washing and wear and tear I'll show you why the pants are the right way in so you don't get confused and then you make sure that that is your hem on your pants I like my high-waisted straight leg sitting just above my ankle by around about an inch so I can wear my converse and it look really cool uh, the linens do tend to stretch a bit so maybe make it a little bit higher than that maybe a couple of inches above but that's the way you do a really nice funky boxed out hem on your straight pants and really cool straight leg pants okay let's go do the waistband right now I've already pinned one of the zips one of the sides of the zips in place along there along the back but there's I tried out a new technique and I really like it I've been doing some more study with sewing on the weekend and I I've watched this French woman teach me a very complex French blouse which I really love but there's a there's a shop at Noosa that sells the designs that I really like the, a lot of French designers kind of peasants top a little bit step above scotch and soda quality because scotch and soda is going more synthetic which is a little bit sad and I don't buy synthetic clothing so I'm always looking that's always been my uh, shopping habits for the past 27 years that I don't buy synthetic fabrics just because I don't want to support it uh, but you know by the by I'm one of seven billion but I do love a good cotton top because I do normally come from the tropics. I've lived in Brisbane for the past 25 years, but I'm about to move back. So synthetics are definitely out. But this woman taught me something about the prepping before you pin, which I thought was really super cool. So I know that I've got a one seam allowance. So to make things easier for me while I'm pinning the zip in, because I don't, I don't want to put a stay stitch in, but I can actually do the same thing with some pins. So what I've done on this side, and that's the end result, and I'm pretty bloody happy because it's covering the middle of the zip. And that's the way you want it to happen so that when you actually sew both sides, you don't see the zip you don't see the zip right so what you want to do so you can see how I've got my these are my three pins to pin over my one centimeter and then what you do the way that you do your pins so that you can sew smarter is that you want to make sure and I, I know with when I'm sewing zips I always start on the right hand side and I come down so this way I want the head of the pins facing towards me so that I can easily pull out the pin as I sew so this means when I go up this way I'm going to do my drop my keep my needle in the fabric as I sew across five stitches across the bottom of the zip to anchor that in place and then I'm going to turn my pants around underneath the sewing machine so this means when I'm pinning up this side I want to make sure that my pins are facing the heads are facing me this way so always remember when you're pinning in shorter zips definitely do this this way in longer zips you can pin the head both ways because there's a hack we have for that that shows you how to keep the zip straight but on this one it's 20 centimeters and my main thing I want to keep lined up more than anything else in this is to make sure that my zip cover what I want to make sure is that my half my seam allowance meets at the at the halfway point on each side of the zip so then I don't get to see the zip underneath and it sits really flat like that but the next thing you need to be really mindful of is that join in the waistband you want to make sure those line up as you're stitching so you want to pin it so that it looks that way so I know that's my halfway over my pin so I'm going to put my needle my pin in so the head's facing towards the top of the waistband and then I know oh, that is sweetness and that's it sew that in place and then you're done 
with the top of the waistband and I've shown you how to do the hem and then all you have to do is get a little hook and eye put it at the top of the zip there and then you have a very cool funky pair of high-waisted pants that's your walker through don't forget to trim all these excess threads off and if it's a serger make sure you just pull it tight and then trim those off make sure you put all your threads in the one bundle and find someone who can recycle it for you there's women out there that actually turn this back into fabric in some cool way so try not to throw any of your waste out because there is a way to recycle all your sewing waste show me your end result i want to see how you go and if there's anything i've missed let me know and i'll redo this thanks <laughs>